Hey guys, OG Albini here, and I'm sure you've all seen a million Pokemon fun fact videos or Pokemon facts you didn't know videos, but have you ever seen one about competitive Pokemon? Competitive Pokemon has a ton of really cool and downright wacky interactions, and today I wanted to highlight some of them that you may not know. If you guys do enjoy today's Pokemon competitive fun facts video, be sure to drop a like on the video as well as subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 3,000 subs, and I would really appreciate it to help us out in reaching that goal. Um, and if you have any cool fun facts that you know that you think other people might not know, drop them in the comments below. Maybe they'll be featured in a future video. Reflect and Light Screen can be obnoxious to play against. The combination of the two moves and the item Light Clay increasing the duration makes setup spamming hyper offense teams incredibly hard to maneuver around. I get shivers when I think of a spother setting up Calm Mind after Calm Mind behind screens. <sighs> Now, there are ways to remove dual screens, one of which being Defog, which has great applications outside of screens removal, and the other being Brick Break, which is pretty widely distributed. The only issue is that because it's a fighting type move, a ghost type can come in and block your attempt at removing said screens. And an Annihilate under screens is just as scary as an Espathra. But what if I told you that ghost types don't actually block the removal of screens from Brick Break? Well, I'd be lying. At least I would be if I told you that in the year 2023. If we went back 20 years in time, I'd be as honest as honest can be. As back in Generation 3, Brick Break would actually break the opposing side's screens, even if the move itself does not make contact with the opposing Pokemon. In all honesty, I kind of prefer it this way. Regardless of you hitting the Pokemon, the screens are a separate entity and you should be able to break them regardless of the typing. Same with Psychic Fangs and Dark Types. Let me know if you guys agree or not in the comments. Shadow Tag is one of the most broken abilities in Pokemon, trapping your opponent in with you unless they are a Ghost type or holding the item Shed Shell. I mean, the ability is so broken that it got Wobbuffet banned. However, there's one more circumstance where Shadow Tag fails to trap the opposing Pokemon, and it's one I didn't know until this week when building for a Draft League match. Shadow Tag users cannot trap other Pokemon with the Shadow Tag ability. Whether that be Gothitelle mirror matchups, Wobbuffet mirror matchups, Goth vs. Wob matchups, or even if a Pokemon like Gardevoir comes in to copy your ability and try and counter trap you. Both Pokemon have the ability to switch out if they so please. The weird thing about this is, it doesn't work like that for Arena Trap, a very similar ability and function to Shadow Tag. So in a Dugtrio vs Dugtrio standoff, you better win that speed die. Now I play Smogon in the draft format primarily, so I've never had to deal with this next mechanic due to the evasion clause. That mechanic is well a uh, evasion, duh. But I'm sure that at least one of you have been playing in a friendly match with a friend and they brought a not so friendly Chansey with Minimize to try and tilt you off the face of the earth. Well I have a solution for you my friend. Next time your cheesy friend pulls up with his evasion shenanigans, you go right ahead and squish that Chansey with Body Slam, Stomp, Dragon Rush, Heat Crash, Heavy Slam, or Frying Press. As not only will these moves guaranteed hit through the evasion boost, but they also deal double damage to a Pokemon that's used Minimize. That'll teach them to try and cheese you ever again. Pokemon can be a pretty toxic game. No, no, like, they literally get it because the, the move Toxic, and I meant Toxic isn't- You know what, never mind. Let's just get to the facts I have about Toxic itself. There's some pretty cool interaction with how the Toxic counter racks up throughout turns. This one is probably the most useful for you to know for your battles. And that's how Toxic interacts with the ability Magic Guard. Let's say I have an Oxie and you have a Reuniclus. I Toxic your Reuniclus as you switch in, but you have Magic Guard so you don't take any of the residual damage. I start throwing off Panic Psychics and knockoffs, and you just start Calm Minding and eating my hits and boosting your stats to terrifying heights. Just as you get to plus six, plus six, and you think you can just sweep through the rest of my team, I hit you with a skill swap. Now you have my ability, Levitate instead of Magic Guard, and you get hit with seven turns of toxic damage at once, basically taking you out. The Toxic Timer still compounds regardless of Magic Guard blocking the damage. So if Magic Guard is removed in some way, you will take all that damage at once. This works the same for Gliscor or Breloom and their Poison Heal ability. Mimikyu and its Disguise ability are also really finicky, but today I learned of a really odd interaction. Let's pretend for some reason I really want your Mimikyu to be a Water type, so I use Soak on it. Why do I want it to be a Water type? I don't know, maybe it just looks like a fish to me. Regardless, I get the Soak off and your Mimifish uses Swords Dance. Oh no! I need to attack and break this sucker's disguise. I click liquidation, break your disguise, and now you're not a water type anymore? Why is it not a fish anymore? Is it because it looks nothing like a fish? Maybe. Honestly, this is another one I can't explain, like the cursed interaction from last video. If you guys have any idea, let me know in the comments below. 
Here's a Generation 9 specific one, how Protosynthesis, Quark Drive, and Booster Energy work and interact with one another. For those of you not acquainted with the new games, Protosynthesis and Quark Drive are the abilities of the Paradox Pokemon that boost their highest stat by 1.3 times, aside from speed, which gets a 1.5 times boost, in the sun and electric terrain, respectively. Booster Energy is an item where you can get your ability to activate outside of the sun or electric terrain. If a Pokemon is holding Booster Energy when it comes onto the field with that field condition active, the field condition activates their ability and Booster Energy is not used. However, once the field condition disappears, the Booster Energy activates. Okay, simple enough. Now it gets more complicated. Say I come in with my Fluttermane, holding a Booster Energy, but the sun is active. I get a speed boost from Protosynthesis due to the sun being up and it being my highest stat. The next turn, I elect to set up a Calm Mind, boosting my special attack and special defense by one stage. The turn after the sun goes away, I momentarily lose my Protosynthesis boost. Then, my booster energy procs, so you would think I get my speed boost back, right? Wrong. I actually get a special attack boost now, as due to the Calm Mind, my special attack is now my highest stat. Niche interaction, but actually potentially very useful. Rather than finish it off with one or two more separate facts, I'm going to end today's video with a segment I like to call Gen 1 Pokemon is Broken. I'm just going to list off some weird interactions and glitches that you may or may not know. You can use these to your advantage when you play your friends in your new Pokemon Stadium port that was just released. Number one, every move in the game has a random 1 in 256 chance of missing. Even moves like Flamethrower or Surf that have 100% accuracy. Man, I would lose my mind if I missed a Thunderbolt. Number two, Generation 1 was the only gem where Hyper Beam was a good move, as it did not require you to recharge if you knocked out a Pokemon with the move. This is one of the reasons why the Broken Bull is so broken. Number three, another reason the bull is so broken is because in Generation 1, critical hit rates were based on how fast you were. A big fella like Snorlax is basically never critting, while Tauros has a crazy 21.48% chance to crit every single time it attacks. And that's not even the highest one either. The highest crit rate in Gen 1 belongs to the Bolo Speed Electro with a 27.34% chance to crit. Number four, Body Slam can't paralyze opposing normal types? Y yeah, I don't know. Uh, come on, Game Freak. This can't be on purpose. Number five, and one more that I personally didn't know, Toxic and Lead Seed actually stack in damage in Generation 1 due to using the same code or something like that. There are honestly a ton more problems and glitches and facts about Gen 1, but we'll save those for future videos in the series. If you guys enjoyed today's episode of Competitive Pokemon Fun Facts, be sure to drop a like um, and sub. Like I said, I'd really appreciate it a ton. Let me know fun ones that you have in the comments below that I'm missing. I'm always looking for new suggestions for this series and things like that. And Let me know what your favorite fact from today was, or if you knew all of them, if you only knew one of them, whatever it may be. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed regardless, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.